Hello everyone, this is The Question, and I'm back with my reading log for the month of March. Sorry it's taken so long, normally I get these out earlier in the month, but this one, I was messing with the format, and so I, was, I, I made a video originally and I wasn't too happy with it, so I decided to kind of change things up. So let me know how you like this, this new version of a reading log, and if this one, if you think this one's better than how I was doing them in the past. But, uh, but yeah, let's get into it. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. And let's start talking about the books. Okay, so the main thing I read this month was Kiss and White Lily for My Dearest Girl. This is a 10 volume Yuri series following a large cast of students at an all girls high school. So out of the two main leads here on the cover, the one on the left is usually the top of her class. She expects to be the top of the class after being that in middle school, but she ends up getting beat in all her classes by the lazy genius on the right who gets higher scores in all her classes without even trying. So the main plot of this series revolves around these two rivals going from friends or going from enemies to friends, but each volume, as you can see here, with two different characters, also brings up two other students from the school and puts the focus on their story. So over the length of this, uh, over these 10 volumes, we end up getting introduced to quite a lot of characters and occasionally it can be tough to tell them apart when they're all dressed up in school uniforms, but for the most part, uh, they're all giving interesting storylines and the whole series wraps up very well with it only being 10 volumes, it doesn't get dragged out. Uh, there is one volume near the middle where one of the storylines involves a student having romantic feelings for her, for an adult family member, which is uh, unfortunate and could easily have been cut. But thankfully, it's just a very small story in the overall story of this series. So overall, just a really good Yuri series, one that I haven't heard talked about very much. I, when, I, when I bought this off, uh, off someone on a Reddit swap, I had, I had to look up this series because I had never even heard of it. I just saw someone selling it and I was like, wow, that's, I've never even heard of that and picked it up and I'm glad I did. Really, really recommended Yuri series. Here's the final volume. So that was Kiss and White Lily for My Dearest Girl. Next up we have Hanako and the Terror of Allegory. This is a four volume out of print Tokyo Pop series that was picked up by Viz and it's released digitally by Viz, but it's not in print anymore. So it follows Daisuke, a private detective who handles paranormal cases involving Japanese folklore and urban legends. Um, at his agency, he also works with Hanako, this girl here, who is a young girl I guess ghost who haunts restrooms so she can travel in between in between restrooms but can't go to places without them. And the third member of the group is uh, Kane who just kind of follows along after Dasuke uh, helps her with a case. So the back cover of this series says this series is a look into Japanese horror that takes readers on a journey into the terror that lurks inside us all. I didn't get any of that out of this uh, series. Instead, found it to kind of be a more comedic uh, action series than anything really horror related. The art was fine, but overall, I really only enjoyed like the first volume when it was setting stuff up. But when the plot starts going, it gets pretty nonsensical. And if it would have been any longer than four volumes, I definitely would have dropped this. Uh, so this one I will not be keeping in my collection. Next we have Our Teachers Are Dating. This is a short four volume Yuri series following two teachers who have just started dating. They are both fairly new to romance but are helped along by their coworkers and students who are rooting for them to succeed. So this series has a very small cast of characters which helps out due to its short length. So it really only focuses on our two teachers with just kind of some little background stuff with uh, the, the other teachers and kids in the school. Um, but the two main, the two leads here, they make a cute couple, they have good chemistry, but overall this is just kind of a fluffy Yuri series. It doesn't have much substance to it. So it does get a little spicy in places, which at first kind of threw me off because everything else about the book, the overall tone, the artwork is very cute and innocent. 
but it does get spicy in spots, but it does end up fitting in well with the story. So um, if you're looking for a Yuri series that, uh, and you've read through a lot of other stuff, then go ahead and give this one a shout or a, a shot, but it's nothing that's going to blow you away. It's just kind of a, a, a fluffy kind of cute, uh, short Yuri series. Next up, we have Sweet Poolside by Shuzo Oshimi. This is another Shuzo Oshimi one-shot, and this one revolves around a junior high student in the swimming club who is embarrassed about his lack of body hair, and he ends up meeting a female student who also is in the swimming club who has a problem that she has too much body hair, so they end up teaming up where he shaves her regularly. So... This one has fairly mediocre reviews, but I actually quite enjoyed it. It's easily my favorite of the Oshimi one-shots. The plot is engaging, and Oshimi is really just a master at these very bizarre stories. So if you know, if you've read Oshimi stuff, you know what kind of weirdness is going to go on in here. Um, this is highly recommended. It's it's also got a really fantastic Oshimi afterward. He always does really good afterwards and tells gives you way too much information. Uh, more than more than he really should be telling, but uh, I, I really enjoy those. So highly recommended uh, Sweet Pool Set. Next up, we have a new series. This is Doomsday with My Dog, Volume 1. This is a new Yen Press series about a young girl journeying through the ruins of society as the last human on Earth. So she travels along with her dog, and they have pretty deep philosophical conversations, along with a lot of funny interactions along the way. So this one really surprised me. I expected it to just be a cute series with this girl and her dog, but it was really funny. I had, had quite a few laugh out loud moments. The story went in some really interesting places with a lot of good banter between the dog and the girl. And I don't want to spoil, I'm not going to spoil kind of stuff that goes on in this, but there's this story goes in a lot of weird places and you meet a lot of weird characters that, uh, that I was not expecting. Uh, really looking forward to reading more of this series. This was one of the best new series that I've read all year. Next up, we have another new series, and that is Shoha Shoten. This is a new Viz series drawn by Takeshi Obata of Death Note fame. It follows two high school students who want to become the best comedy duo in Japan. So this first volume focuses kind of on their backstory, why they want to join up, and then it also goes, kind of shows you a little bit about the comedy scene in Japan. So even though this book is about comedy, I didn't really find any of the jokes or skits even remotely funny in this, but that's fine because it's more of a slice of life series about these two characters more than a straight comedy book. But if you're going into it going, hey, I want to laugh out loud uh, comedy series, this is not, I think you're going to be disappointed because that's not really what this is. But the Obata art works really well. I really like the two main characters. So I'm looking forward to continuing this and seeing where it goes. Okay, so next we have another new series. We have Happy of the End, Volume 1. This is a new BL series published by Kuma. So we have our main character, this guy on the right, who is a homeless young man who wakes up dazed in a pile of trash bags and gets found by the man who he was having a one-night stand with the night before. So he ends up moving in with that person, and since he has no place to stay, and this first volume is just pretty much the start of the relationship and dealing with their shared childhood trauma and abuse. So this one is just really not for me. This one has some pretty great reviews on Goodreads. This is just not my type of series. The art was great, but the two characters are both, the one is very, is constantly humiliating the other one. Uh, he sexually assaults the other character. Um, so just not my idea what I want to read in a romance series. So I will not be continuing with this one, but if that seems up your alley, uh, just, just to let everybody know, this book is uncensored, so very graphic, um, so just be aware of that. But yeah, I will be unhauling this. This just was not my type of, uh, of well, not what I was looking for in a manga series. Next up, we have A Zoo in Winter. This is a one-shot Jiro Taniguchi book. Uh, it is a semi-autobiographical story following Hamaguchi, who dreams of becoming a graphic artist, but ends up working as an office employee at a clothing company, and then later becomes a manga artist's assistant. So even with working countless hours and being incredibly overworked, he finds that he wants to create manga of his own. So I've been reading through, I have 
all of the Taniguchi books that have been released in English, and I've been reading through them fairly slow just because, you know, he passed away. There's not going to be, there's probably not going to be too much more of these released in English. Um, so I'm trying to go through them slow because I really enjoy them. And yeah, this is another solid one. He's really great at these slice of life drama stories. His artwork is amazing. Um, I, I still, A Journal of My Father is still the top of the top of my list of Taniguchi books that I would recommend everyone, but this is another solid one. I highly recommend this one if you haven't read it. Just a really great uh, Taniguchi book. Okay, so next we have The Gay Who Turned Kaiju. This is a Yen Press one-shot following Takashi, a high school student who is outed at school at being gay and starts getting bullied because of it. He wishes he could be someone else and wakes up one morning with the head of a kaiju. So his new persona gives him the confidence to stand up to his bullies and be comfortable with his self. So I really enjoyed this one shot. The title is awesome. That's got to be up for the running for one of the best titles of any manga series in 2023. The artwork was great. And it was a really nice story about a kid coming to terms with his sexuality. It has a good mix of comedy and drama. And hopefully we get more books by this creator tran translated into English, since apparently they're a pretty prolific BL uh, creator in Japan, and this, I think, is the only release that we've gotten in English. So, yeah, if you that sounds interesting to you, definitely check this one out. Can't recommend it enough. Okay, so next up we have this fairly large omnibus. This is Break of Dawn. This is an all-in-one omnibus from Kadansha. It is a sci-fi coming-of-age story about a group of kids who stumble upon some, something not from this world and decide to help it get back to their home. So this one I was super excited for, coming-of-age, science fiction. I expected to really love this, so I brought this with me when I went to visit my mom in Mississippi. I was going to have uh, a lot of free time at night in the hotel, so I was, you know, I was like, this is a really thick one, this will cover the time I'm there. And I got about 20 pages into this and I realized I'd made a huge mistake because this was the only manga I had brought because this one was a real slog to get through. It just was not very interesting at all, the story. I would read about 50 pages and I would start falling asleep. I'd be yawning. It just was really tough to make it through. Um, the characters are not that interesting. The plot is not very engaging. It does pick up a bit in the second half, like when we start getting more backstory about the kids' parents and their place and what was going on in the story, but not enough to make this worth the read. I wouldn't recommend this. Um, so this one will be getting unhauled. Next up, we have a fairly new series, and that is Subaki Chow, Lonely Planet. I read through volumes one and two. This is an ongoing Yen Press series by Mika Yamamori, who also has In the Clear Moonlit Dusk, uh, currently released by Kadansha, which is super popular. Uh, this story here follows a high school student who is stuck with her father's debt and takes a job as a live-in housekeeper for a young novelist. So this is her, this is the young novelist. At first they butt heads, but over these first two volumes they end up becoming closer. So this one here, after I could tell I wasn't going to enjoy Break of Dawn, I went to the local Barnes & Noble in Mississippi and grabbed these two volumes. And these were both a real delight to read. I really enjoyed them. I really enjoyed these two volumes. I flew right through them. I will definitely continue on with these series. The artwork was great. Characters are really fun. They have good chemistry. And I'm looking forward to seeing where this story goes. Next up, I read through four alternative manga anthologies this month. These are ones I've had in my collection, all out of print stuff that I've had for a while, and I finally decided to read through them this month. So first we have Sake Jock. This is, like it says, comics from today's Japanese underground. This is a very short, as you can see here, almost maybe the size of like a prestige comic, like back in the day that was like 80 pages long that you'd get from like Marvel or DC. And this one is a anthology of alternative manga creators released by Fantagraphics in 1995. This was easily my least favorite of these anthologies with none of the short stories really grabbing me, grabbing my attention or making me want to search more about the creators. Just nothing really hooked me that much. I'm still glad to have this as kind of a historical artifact of, you know, kind of a really early showing of alternative manga here for an English audience but I don't really see myself rereading this volume uh, very often. 
Next to the anthologies, we have Secret Comics Japan. This one was released by Viz back in 2000 and features stories by some more well-known names in the alternative manga scene, such as Shintaro Kago and Usamaru Furuya. This one I enjoyed quite a lot more than Sake Jock, partly with, because it's almost 200 pages long, so it's, you know, more than double the size of the other, of the other story, or the other book, there's a wider variety of stories, and there were quite a few in here that I really enjoyed. And even the ones that I didn't care for that much, uh, for the plot, I usually would enjoy the art. So this one I definitely would recommend more than uh, Sake Jock. So that's Secret Comics Japan. The third one I read was Comics Underground Japan. This one is uh, was released by Blast Books back in 1996. And this one features a good mix of lesser known creators along with some more well-known names like Hideshi Hino and Suhiro Maruo. This was another really solid collection and had some really crazy stories in it. And this one, being a uh, Hideshi Hino fan, really glad to have this since this has a story in it that wasn't in any of the Hino horror releases. And it's a really fun and creepy story. Uh, better than a lot of the ones that were actually in those Hino Horror collections. So this one was really great. The last of these anthologies I read was Axe Alternative Manga Volume 1. This was listed as a Volume 1, but due to low sales, we never got a follow-up release. This was released by Top Shelf back in 2010. So this one was the most recent of any of these. And this one I actually remembered seeing back when I was reading American comics in the 2010s. And I would always see this one like for... For clearance at, at different bookstores and which is crazy because now this one goes for 70 plus dollars it's very out of print harder to find so this one definitely has the largest number of stories in it as you can tell here this one is about 400 pages long and while this one doesn't really have any like creators that i was more familiar with it i really enjoyed the variety and if you're only going to pick up one or two of these anthologies axe and comics underground japan would probably be the two that I would recommend. Just know these anthologies are not really for everyone. If, if all you're reading is more mainstream stuff, these probably aren't gonna be for you, but if you enjoy checking out kind of the wide variety of manga there is, especially stuff that's released in Japan that we don't get published in English a lot, then definitely give uh, any of these four releases a shot. Next, we have another fairly new release. This is the Pet Detective Agency. This is a one-shot BL release published by Kuma. It follows an ex-cop who now runs his own detective agency, which mainly focuses on pet-related cases. Uh, his assistant is in love with him, and the story kind of revolves around them solving cases, working together, and the assistant trying to get his boss to reciprocate his feelings towards him. So this one I really enjoyed. Um, I really wish this would have been an ongoing series. I'm kind of sad that this is just a one-shot because the two main characters, they're really well written, the artwork is great, and they have some really fun interactions together. So overall, just a cute romance book, and hopefully we end up getting more of these characters down the line. Next up, we have True Beauty, Volume 1. This is a full-color webtoon series. As it says on the cover, a global webtoon phenomenon. This story is about a plain high school girl wants to be more popular in school so she watches a bunch of beauty videos online and with a ton of makeup ends up looking like a completely different person and becomes super popular at school and also on social media so in this first volume she still goes out around her neighborhood um, without the makeup on and she ends up running into a very handsome guy from her school and they bond over their love of comics so this one was a complete blind buy i'm not really well versed in webtoons but I saw this hardcover. It was up for pre-order at Amazon a couple months before it came out. And it was like 50% off for the pre-order for the hardcover. And it was actually cheaper than the soft cover because I guess these releases, they release a hardcover version and a soft cover version. And I thought the hardcover looked really nice. The artwork looked great on the cover. I was like, I'm willing to give it a shot. So even after reading this first volume, I'm still not really sure how I feel about it. It was okay. It was well made. The full color was nice. I just don't think it's really for me. Um, the story just doesn't seem like something that I'm going to be that engaged in. So this one's kind of up in the air on whether or not I'm going to continue with it. Um, not bad, not great, just kind of in the middle for me. So that is True Beauty. Okay, so next we have another omnibus release. This is Josie the Tiger and the Fish. This is an omnibus release from Yen Press, which is based on a novel 
that was then turned into an animated film and then made into this manga form, which is what I have here. And it follows a college student studying marine life and he needs to save up money to study abroad. So he takes a job as a part-time caretaker for a young woman who's wheelchair bound and doesn't leave her house. She starts off very standoffish, but obviously over time they end up getting closer and he shows her all the things outside of her house to enjoy. So this one, fairly by the numbers kind of romance story, but it moves along and it hits all the plot points that you think it's gonna do. But what makes it stand out, the artwork is, is really great. I really enjoyed the artwork. This cover is really great. Um, so it was a very easy read, just a very, you know, a very good, solid romance book. But the, the young woman here, she makes a couple decisions that were a little over the top, kind of made me roll my eyes when I was reading those. So that took it down a little bit, but overall just kind of a solid love story. And if you're looking for one of those, this is a good one. Next up we have Rakuta Laughs. This one I cannot show you the back cover because there's nudity on it, but this one is a one shot published by Dempa. It follows Rakuta who is a gangster tasked with disposing of a body and ends up being set up for the murder of his boss. So this one was by far my least favorite read of the month, possibly my least favorite read of the year. The artwork is for the most part pretty great. That's kind of what sold me on picking this up uh, just based on this cover, but it's very rushed in spots. You can tell it was, you know, it, he, the creator was definitely in a rush finishing this one. The story and characters, it's just a really bad Sin City ripoff. The lead is poorly written. The plot is gross. It's just a gross, bad story. Um, it does mention in the back that the creator is a famous artist in Japan who had his editors force him to create a manga. And so this definitely feels like that's what this is. So this one will be getting unhauled by me. Next we have, we're continuing the one shots. We have is Love the Answer. This is a one shot published by Kadansha and it is a coming of age story about a young woman coming into her own as she discovers she is asexual. She was picked on in high school because she is not interested in romance, but after starting college starts researching sexual identities and with support from some new friends becomes more comfortable with herself. So as a straight man, I find myself really interested and fascinated by LGBT stories, especially ones that are about identities that are different from mine and what people have to go through just not only to be accepted by others, but just to kind of accept themselves. I always find that, you know, I'm drawn to these stories, stories that are different from my own. Um, and this one was a really informative read with a great group of characters. The other kids in her, in her college that help her out, her friends. Um, it's, it's just a very, very informative read and it wraps up very nicely. So this is a highly recommended one shot. And lastly, we have My Special One Volume One. This is a new Shoujo Beat ongoing series. Uh, my special one follows a high school girl who swears off handsome guys after an embarrassing rejection years earlier. She has no interest in boy bands or pop stars, but after a popular idol comes into her family restaurant that she works at, her dislike for him ends up being a challenge to him as he tries to make her a fan. So this one, another one that, sh that it was just fine. The age gap is a little concerning considering where I assume the story is going but this first volume at least is just kind of set up and the plot goes pretty quickly. Um, I, I feel like in a lot of series, what happens in this first volume would have been along five or six volumes. So it definitely, it goes pretty fast, um, but it's pretty silly and light. So I'm, this is another one where I'm not sure if I'm gonna, con gonna continue, I'm gonna keep this first volume and then just kind of see how I feel and see if I end up feel like I wanna pick up more volumes down the line. Okay, so that was it for the month of March. Anything in here that you disagree with my thoughts or agree, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, everybody have a great month of April and I'll see you in the next video.